I've arranged the presentation here so that uh, I'll give you a brief introduction to our company and then we'll talk about very, very basic data acquisition. We'll talk, because you can't really understand uh, a lot of what we do with data acquisition doesn't make sense unless you understand sensors. And so I always like to start with the details of sensors. What are they and why do you need a data acquisition thing in the first place? We'll get into a little bit more deeper data acquisition function, talk about things like A to D conversion and filtering. Um, SAJ211, as Rick mentioned, is really key in our field. There's part, SAJ211 part one covers electronic instrumentation for impact test and, and part two is photo, photometrics. We rely on that all the time. And then some practical stuff at the end, hopefully, about uh, data analysis and polarities and so on. Um, DTS what was, was founded in 1990, so we, we just celebrated our, our 20th anniversary. And um, we're three engineers, we all met in the crash test world. Um, we used to, we all met at a place out in uh, California where we did all kinds of work for the federal government. Um, we've been in the LA area for 20 years. That's myself and uh, Tim Kippen and Steve Pruitt. Um, my background is just a little bit about this. Um, I'm one of the three owners of the company still. DTS has always had the same ownership. I'm responsible for worldwide te technical support. So that means the field issues are under my, my uh, coverage and I've got eight people who work at different offices around the country that, uh, and the world that service the products. Like I said, I've been doing this since 1979 when I, when I worked for a, a test lab in, out in California. Right now, I'm a, a member of the SAE Instrumentation Standards Committee. And the Instrumentation Standards Committee um, is, the, is the committee that writes SAEJ211. And so I'm one of the co-authors of the current version of SAEJ211. And then there's some other related SAE recommended practices. Things like injury calculations and transducer issues are covered by SAE. Uh, back in the 80s, when I got my feet wet, I did a lot of work with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, where we um, were a contract test lab, and we also helped develop some of the test procedures that they still use today. Um, it's kind of funny, but you know, the, the entire history of even vehicular mo uh, motor vehicle safety is not that long. It really only came into its own in the early 1970s. So uh, it's a fairly young field still. I, uh, by, by knowledge and experience, I'm a hardware, electronics hardware designer. So pretty much all the products that people use in this field that they buy from us, uh, I, I was involved in the sensor, the sensing end of things. So um, real briefly, we've got a headquarters in Seal Beach, California. That's about 35 miles due south of LA. Um, we have a three person office in, in Michigan and uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but uh, <laughs> a couple years ago I got a rent-a-car that the, the license plate just happened to be DTS, and I thought that was really cool, so I took a picture. Uh, we have worldwide support offices um, in, uh, kind of sprinkled around the world where we have uh, systems. So we've, uh, from the days when we started doing business with the FAA back in about 1997, uh, we, were, we were less than 10 people as a company then, and today we've, we've grown to 55. So um, the interest in making measurements in all sorts of safety and biomechanics applications has really, has really grown over the years, and it's one of the things that's allowed us to grow as a business. All we make is high, rugged, high sample rate data acquisition systems. We're going to talk about the, the guts of those today. Uh, Aircraft seat testing, crash testing, automotive stuff, airbags, you name it, biomechanics. A lot of the, a lot of the um, we, we talked earlier about how cadaver studies and animal studies uh, were the, formed the basis of a lot of the injury criteria that now we're trying to protect people in aircraft uh, situations using that data. The biomechanics realm, we work with a number of universities who uh, actually do cadaver testing. And we build instrumentation that's used testing those cadavers. So we work in a, we work in a rugged environment where people expect the thing to work. 
And so we don't build a high volume of product, but we try to build a real you know, high quality that always works. Uh, the client list that we work with is the biggest part of the, the group here, the pyramid of the automotive. You can, you can see all the, all the car companies and suppliers to car companies. That's mostly the car companies themselves and then the companies who make the airbags, the seat belts, any other supplemental restraint systems, seat belt pretensioners, all that stuff. On the research side, these are the universities that are, are really on the cutting edge of understanding uh, human tolerance to impact. And on the left, of course, we've got uh, organizations like NASA and, and uh, the Army, Navy, and Air Force, and some of the other mil military companies. So the work we do, uh, the applications for the kinds of things we do range from uh, everything from car crashes to human volunteer tests to um, even helicopter crashes. In the last year we've worked with NASA at Langley where uh, I think Rick talked about the big gantry they've got where they can drop airplanes and helicopters. They uh, they're actually were testing here um, a special dummy that had some internal organ models and they were trying to determine how, the, how this new dummy concept for assessing vertical impact would, uh, would, have, you know, would, would pan out, basically, it's research. So um, the data, data acquisition, uh, a lot of this stuff, I'm using pictures of our products, but it's, uh, a lot of this is real general. It's not intended to be just specific. The evolution in the data acquisition world has, has really followed the evolution of electronics in general. And, in, the, in 1997 was actually when we introduced um, the TDOS Pro line of products and, and they were really miniaturized and high capability for 14 years ago. But in just another four, five, six years we were able to miniaturize that technology down again and so you can see by, by 2003 we had a data acquisition system that was small enough to um, fit inside of a dummy and today we're, we haven't quite taken the, the leap from the 90s that we did into the mid-2005 uh, era, but uh, we're, we're shrinking stuff down and it really follows the evolution of electronics in general. You know, nobody had a smartphone 10 years ago and well, we, we, be, we uh, benefit from that technology. The, the current products that we, we sell and uh, that are in service for, for aerospace and automotive cr uh, impact test are really um, the TDOS Pro product, which you're going to see later uh, today and over the next couple days. That's the system that is on the sled here at CAMI. We also make the uh, G5 system, which is designed to be small enough to go into a dummy, and then the slice system, which is, uh, uh, again, smaller. Out in the, in the crash hall, um, I'll have some examples of these things you can look at, and we'll, we'll have some working live so you can see what it works, how it works. So this is the system that's, that's here at CAMI. It, it's a modular system where we have uh, what we call sensor inputs. Uh, we have a thing called a, to a TOM or a timed output unit which actually is used to fire airbags and seatbelt pretensioners. And then we have a thing called a DIM. That's a digital input unit. In the G5 world, it's basically the same kind of system only packaged differently. Um, designed to you know, mount on a sled into a vehicle or even into a crash dummy. And then uh, finally, the slice systems, which are the latest generation that we sell. So, what are we here for? How do we get good data out of this thing? Um, basically, over the last 20 years, we've gotten a much better understanding of what causes injury and what people can tolerate in an impact situation. Now the key is, how do you collect the data from the, from the test dummies that are evolving and becoming more biofidelic? How do we collect good data from that that allows us to assess you know, the health of a person in an impact scenario? So we've got sensors all over a dummy, maybe in the seating systems, and we need to collect that, that in, a, in a way that makes sense. 